Hi, welcome to our Coaches Chat episode nine. Today we're going to talk about uh, nutrition around powerlifting. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Shania from here at Perth Motion, who runs a lot of the nutrition here. Uh, her role, everything that she does. So first off, if you want to kick things off, let it everyone know. Um, hello everyone, my name is Shania. Um, I'm one of the strength and conditioning coaches alongside nutrition here at Perth Motion. Um, I guess within my role, I'm lucky enough to do a mixture of the powerlifting, general strength training uh, with clients here, but I also have to tie in the nutrition side of things as well, which I think is a really good addition to any sort of powerlifting um, performance-based gym uh, to have within coaches there. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think uh, nutrition, somewhat not so much anymore, but used to be highly underrated within powerlifting. Um, a lot of people just wouldn't bother with it. Uh, it's more about mass moves mass for a while, but now I think, Definitely. yeah, I think a lot of people are finally starting to realize that you need to be ticking every box if you want to be somewhat competitive in the sport. For sure, I think it ties in well with um, like longevity. So the way programming has moved, that ties into the same with like our nutrition. So like nutrition is not just about performance and how well we do and just packing on size in order to be able to move more weight it comes into play as well with like how you recover how well you recover uh prioritizing your food around your training um what your lifestyle outside of training looks like whether you're somebody who works a pretty active job or you're pretty sedentary and don't really move a lot and then how we can manipulate that to i guess optimize where we want to perform and where we want to show up yeah uh, i guess why nutrition um what what was your reasoning behind diving so deep into nutrition? Because I know you did a course before you even started the Perth Promotion. Uh, you already were qualified through, uh, I'm not sure what it was. ISSN, International um, Society. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation, like anything in the fitness world out there around nutrition, and a lot of people have a lack of understanding around it. Um, for me, the biggest factor for that was, I guess, my own personal experiences growing up, um, being a teenager, being female. We all go through, I guess, phases where we go have, like, have eating, uh, disordered eating and we go through really bad habits and patterns of it. Um, and then not having people around me who had the ability to educate me or support me through that, I was sort of the only person who could kind of do it. So when I got into, I guess, strength training, to become stronger, it sort of like nutrition was the next thing to add on. So it was like I had to kind of educate myself and I wanted to educate myself. Um, and then I wanted that to then transfer over to the people that I can then influence within this industry as well. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people are the same. Um, you know, for a while now I did powerlifting without any sort of nutrition background. I think for the first year or two. And until I actually didn't get anyone to run my nutrition, I ran my own nutrition for the first couple of years until I broke my arm when it was a big uh, fun sort of moment. Um, and I realized I was going to be really sedentary. Um, training was going to be uh, nothing compared to what it usually would be. So I had to get someone to dial my nutrition in who'd actually had the experience to be able to do it. Um, you know, because it was easy when I was being able to train multiple hours a day, I just consume adequate amount of protein, uh, keep fueled and then just, you know, be fine. But once something so I guess severe happened, I did I didn't have no fucking idea. I didn't know what to do. So I guess this is big where you're gonna to get to a point if you're running your own nutrition, at some stage you're not gonna know what to do. And you need an outside kind of set of eyes looking in and running this for you, exactly like we do with coaching in uh, powerlifting in general. Yeah, for sure. I think um, anybody that is, whether at a competitive level or anyone that's quite independent, we usually try and do everything on our own anyway. So yeah. having, like you said, like that second set of eyes or just like that second voice that can do it for you, it just takes that pressure and stress of having to just like worry about it yourself. Especially again, if you're someone who's a coach and an athlete, you're already looking after a lot of people who are on your book and a lot of clients and athletes who we all care for. So it's like not having to do that one extra thing for yourself also just makes your life will be a thousand times easier too. Yeah, for sure. I think actually running, I ran my first water cup um, 
myself and it was a fucking disaster. I made way. Um, I actually performed quite well that day, but it was just... Uh, it definitely wasn't the nutrition doing that performance. It was probably a thousand other things instead. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a fun day. Yeah. Um, but then I think uh, if we go into it, uh, nutrition based in powerlifting, I think we we can capitalize on this based on what we do in the off season. Uh, For sure. this, this is the biggest thing, uh, you know. I mean, there's really no off season, but there isn't. But if we can get to a sustainable weight where we can capitalize on this throughout uh, you know I'll say off season because it's you're not peeking into a competition yeah so, um, this is where you can maximize potential on in training uh, if your nutrition is on point then you're going to be able to lift more weight you're going to be able to train in a more sustainable way and you won't have to cut or get into a huge deficit leading into a competition this is where it all ties in together so a lot of people don't uh, I guess think about that they kind of just be like, okay, I'm not, I don't have to be at competition weight or around competition weight, so I can kind of get away with eating whatever I want and just being a bit of a slob. And then um, gets to eight weeks out, and you know they're in a deficit for the whole prep. Yeah. Um, and then you know performance will trend down leading into a competition where this is when performance needs to be leading upwards and trending upwards, and we need to kind of be at our best in that period. So it's more. I don't think nutrition is uh, highly based on <clears throat> what you're doing leading into a competition because the groundwork should be made before that. Yeah, and I think too, like that's one of the biggest things is it's just consistency. Like, you know, for yourself, like your comp day nutrition or like nutrition leading into comp doesn't change to what it is in the off season, which I think is where a lot of people go wrong. Yeah. So a lot of people freak out about like having certain foods or like you know, all these like quick carbohydrate sources, lollies, blah, 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 for comp day, when like realistically that day shouldn't really change. It's not at all. You, you, don't, you don't want to be changing what you're eating on comp day just because it's like, okay, it's meat day, I've got to, you know, perform now. It should just be the exact same as what it's done being for the past like three, six months. Yeah, 100%. So yeah. All, all we got to focus on are making weight. Um, it's when we get into cutting. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Who should be cutting? Why should we cut? Um, my point of view, I think, if you're someone that's kind of just starting out in the sport, shouldn't worry about it. Compete where you're comfortable. Yeah. Um, sure. That's, that's going to lead you to the best results. Yeah. And you know, if that means that you compete at 87 kilos in a 93 kilo class, then that's what it is. You don't, you're not having to deficit into a competition. You're not having to, um, you know, then water cut or manipulate food or anything. You're not going to add this extra variable into. Uh, new competition, uh, fresh competition, maybe your first competition, and just be strong. You're gonna end up growing into the 93 beauty hope halfway there, and you're quite young, so. Yeah, I'm sure like you would say, I guess, uh, training age would have a huge play in that as well. Like, like you just said, like people who it's like their first comp or their second comp, like we're in this sport for the long run, so it's not like we need to worry about, yeah, trying to cut into a comp when it's like the first, the first time you're doing one. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's not worth it. Yeah. But it, it's not fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I think the other thing is like those who, for me, the biggest thing working as like a nutrition coach is seeing the behaviors and sort of attitudes and mindsets that kind of play out um, as you kind of work with a client and those who sort of have or do have that more sort of like restricted sort of mindset are. Uh, there's no, there's no point again in sort of trying to force yourself to cut into a comp when you can just go and like compete in a heavier weight class. Because again, like it's not fun. It uh, usually ends up having the opposite effect and going the other way. Yeah. Because... Where we get those like binging habits and yep. weight sort of usually spikes and then yeah, everything sort of has goes in the opposite direction. Yeah, and a lot of people have unrealistic goals uh, if they cut into a competition because they don't understand the fact that. Um, most of the time, you're going to have a performance drop if you're cutting a significant amount of weight into a competition, into a particular day. That you're now lighter on this day than you have been throughout a whole uh, prep and everything else. So uh, that variable is really hard to control. And until you've done it a few times, it's really hard to accept it. Uh, but once you've done it, it becomes easier. Yeah. But from a beginner 
point of view, it's, it's just not worth it. Just compete where you're strong. That way you can express what you've done in training without adding this extra variable and this extra stress that's just going to make the day harder. Yeah, for sure. And I think too, like external environment, um, I'm sure like a lot of the athletes who've competed in like Queensland and then Sydney, like, you know, like humidity and like whatever the environment environment that you're in is also going to like impact that as well, which is like another factor that a lot of people don't think about or don't realise until the day of. Yeah, 100%. I think also get, if we get away from powerlifting, I know that you have a big um, part in eating disorders and stuff like that that got you into nutrition as well. Yeah. Um, did you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, so I guess it was sort of a lack of... To me, the biggest thing is like generational changes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the generation we're in, there's a whole lot more education out there. People are aware. Um, everyone's wanting to learn more. So I guess like when I was growing up, it was sort of one extreme to the other. So it was sort of going from being this like overweight child to uh, I guess like being on social media and seeing just like the baseline of what you see on social media to then going to the next extreme of probably losing about 30 to 35 kilos in a matter of about six to eight weeks because that's what I thought was how you do it. Yeah. Um, and that was sort of just through, yeah, I guess like drilling cardio as everyone does when you're not educated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is why but I no longer do cardio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and so then it wasn't until I had uh, seen a family, me family member who I hadn't seen in ages who sort of pointed out that there wasn't something right and I was just kind of like, okay, like we need to make a change. Um, so I got myself into the gym, got myself a, like a personal trainer at the time because I had no idea what I was doing, um, got myself to a sports dietitian and pretty much just from then onwards, which was probably about 2015. So I was probably like 16 years old. I've pretty much just like grown and built from that point onwards. Um, and just like educated myself around obviously needing to fuel properly in order to actually train and feel good and allow for recovery. Um, for females especially, it's also everything that happens hormonally and, and internally as well. Yep. Um, and yeah, then I sort of just like transitioned between being coached by just like PTs or strength coaches in the gym to finding powerlifting two years ago when COVID hit and working with an online coach. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think, yeah, you touched on it too, like the differences between male and females is quite significant. Yeah, um, it does. Um, things, um, you know, everything else that goes on, <coughs> mental. Um, mental, social media. Social media, yes. Um, I think like, touching on, I guess if we go back to sort of powerlifting, I think there's still a lot of room for female powerlifters to like grow and be comfortable in the sport. Yeah. Um, like especially if you're not in a powerlifting environment, you know, like if you're a power, like a female powerlifter in a commercial gym, it's probably, that's probably one of the most like intimidating places to be. Whereas like in a powerlifting gym, a lot of the things are like a norm, so it's okay. Um, I think the biggest thing as well is definitely the weight class. A lot of females, I find the trend is that we will sit or try to choose the lighter weight class because eating and getting bigger is like this whole like scary yeah. situation. Whereas <clears throat> with males, it's like, oh, we're going to go to 83s and they're like, all right, let's eat. Like, you know, <laughs> like let's go to feed. It's let's like, this, yeah, exactly. It's a completely different attitude and mindset around it. Yeah, well, I think it's, it could be quite daunting for a female to, you know, they look at the weight class and, you know, the, the least amount of weight you can kind of put on is like, it's like four to seven kilos to jump up a weight class. And that's, that's a significant amount. Your body's going to change. Yeah. And, um, you know, you got to have a conversation with someone where they're going to be comfortable doing that because it will take time for your body to, you know, adapt and for you to be happy looking at yourself in the mirror again. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of women will, I mean, any male and females, like we all probably sit somewhere in the middle where it's like either this like kind of like, I guess, four to seven kilo build or like four kilo kind of cut and like either variable, or either option is going to drastically change everything. Especially again, if we look at it from like a weight cutting and like competitive perspective where we sort of want to be sitting, I guess, like a little bit above our weight class and kind of cut into it, like you got to take that into account as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess that's 
that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I do it is because having those conversations and just being able to like educate people around it is like huge because a lot of people don't really have that conversation. I think like nutrition and body image and how we look isn't really spoken about enough. Yeah, not, not in a powerlifting scene. No, sure. um, yeah. <clears throat> probably only just starting to kind of take take the wheel a little bit with um, people starting to realise that, you know, you're going to have to, I guess, as a man, look like an athlete to be a strong athlete uh, in powerlifting. Um, and then it comes down to females actually also accepting the fact that they're going to pack on muscle to, to move some weight, um, which is completely fine. And then... Yeah. You obviously have this, for someone so young, you have a lot of experience in the industry and around all this sort of stuff, um, which is really good and probably why you attract a lot of people to be able to, to help them in this situation. Yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I say, it, I say it often, but I forget, I guess, like how young I am and how much experience I do have. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of it is just like wanting to get like awareness out there about it. Especially like from my own experiences where if you don't have a support network or you don't have like the education or the tools to educate yourself, like that's what a coach is, I guess, there for as well more than anything. Um, it's not just like, you don't just pay us and we just like give you the, give you the sheet and that's it. It's like we're there for like, you know, 24 seven support. We're there to like explain things and have like the tough conversations that you may not be able to have with somebody else. Yeah, and then, then also the encouragement off the back of that to tell yeah. someone that they're doing really well and you know, they're on the right path. They're on the path that, as a coach, we've set them on. Yeah. Um, because some people, you know, they're going to they're gonna question things. Uh, athletes will always question things, especially at the start until, you know, you get the results that they've uh, kind of been chasing, uh, especially in nutrition because, you know, everyone wants to look good. We didn't enter the gym... I don't really know anyone that entered the gym walking into the gym saying, I want to be a fucking powerlifter. Um, no. You didn't walk in being like, I'm going to be a competitive 74 kilo like powerlifter, you know? No, I was yeah. like, I'm going to try get, I'm going to try get some jack. <laughs> uh, see, that, 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 that there alone, I feel like it's, that's like the male, like I'm going to get jacked. I'm like, you know, yeah, pose in front of the true. mirror, like take lots of photos. And then it's like, the experience again, like even for myself, it's like I went into the gym, yes, to obviously get healthy and I guess get out of a like a bad rut that I was in, but it was also like my my first my first sort of uh, thought process in the gym was like I'm gonna change how I look, yeah. not get jacked, but like just change. Yeah, it's a, well, it's the same, but it's, it's just it's, it's different. different. Yeah. It's worded different, right? Yeah. Like it's that different sort of mindset. Um, and I mean, there's definitely still days. There's always good and bad days. Everyone has, well, not good and bad days, but like how I can wake up some days is completely different. And there's some days where I'm like, you know, like my weight hasn't moved in probably like a good like year and a half now, but like in terms of body shape and like body composition, it's entirely different. Yeah, 100%. Um, and there's definitely still some days where like if I'm not in gym gear and I'm just like out and about in like shorts and a t shirt. And I'm like, okay, I fucking do, oh, I do, can I swear on this? Yeah, yeah too bad. Um, where I'm like, okay, I do not look like your stereotypical, like, female, you know? Like, there's definitely still days where, like, that happens. And, uh, like, you walk through the shops and, like, people sort of just, like, stare at you. And it's, like, that very, like, hit or miss of where you're either just, like, I don't even fucking care what you're thinking right now. Or, like, other days where you're, like, all right, like... This is sort of like a little bit like intimidating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. For sure. Uh, blokes do get that as well. Probably not to that extent. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, people are going to look, um, you know, when we, we're packing on muscle, although not really for me because I'm only 70 kilos, but uh, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, we, we, we care. Yeah. We care yeah. about what we look like, else we would not have entered the gym in the first place. For sure. Um, which is where nutrition. You can train as hard as you can, but you aren't going to out train a bad diet. No. Uh, it just won't happen. It's the same as uh, sleep and all those other little uh, recoverable things that you can do. Nutrition is probably the biggest one, um, especially if you're not tracking at all because you don't even know how much protein you're taking. 